The call came in early during the shift, prompting an immediate response from our unit. The location was a small, seemingly deserted house situated on the outskirts of Redacted. The street itself was sparsely populated, with only a handful of residences in the vicinity. Reports indicated that neighbors had heard disturbing noises emanating from the property, including screams and the sound of objects being smashed. Upon arrival, we proceeded cautiously, unsure of what we might encounter within the confines of the dwelling. We noted that the doors to the residence were securely locked. However, visible signs of damage indicated that gaining entry would not prove difficult. With caution, we breached the compromised entrance, the breached door ushered us into a narrow, cramped hallway, its dimly lit expanse leading to three additional closed doors. As we hesitated, uncertain of our next move, a chorus of desperate pleas echoed through the air, emanating simultaneously from behind each of the closed doors. With a sense of trepidation, we opted to investigate the source of the pleas for help behind the leftmost door. Stepping across the threshold, the door swung shut behind us with an ominous finality, clicking into place as it locked itself. Trapped within the confines of the room in the stark emptiness of the room, our tension escalated as we found no sign of the source of the distress calls. Instinctively, I drew my weapon, my hand tightening around its familiar grip as a sense of unease settled over us. With mounting urgency, we attempted to open the door, but to our dismay, it remained stubbornly immobile, resisting our efforts to escape. Amidst the palpable silence, a chilling laughter pierced the air, its origin indiscernible within the confines of the room. The sound echoed mockingly, sending a chill down our spines as we grappled with the unsettling realization that we were not alone. The laughter reverberated through the room, it seemed to emanate not from any tangible source but rather from the very walls themselves. Its spectral quality sent shivers down our spines, unsettling our senses and heightening our apprehension. And then in the blink of an eye, as if succumbing to some malevolent force, the door that had previously confined us vanished without a trace. Its sudden disappearance left us stranded in the eerie emptiness of the room, our only connection to the outside world severed in an instant. With mounting dread, we surveyed our surroundings, now acutely aware of the unsettling reality that we were trapped within an inexplicable abyss, isolated from the familiar confines of the world beyond with our pistols gripped tightly in hand, we stood poised for whatever malevolent presence lurked within the shadows of the room. Yet, despite our vigilance, no entity emerged from the oppressive darkness to confront us. Time seemed to stretch endlessly as we remained locked in a tense standoff, our senses attuned to the slightest disturbance in the air. Then, as abruptly as it had begun, the haunting laughter ceased, leaving behind an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. And then we heard a loud creak, I turned around and saw the door again, responding swiftly to the sound of the door opening, we dashed through the newly revealed exit, propelled by a combination of urgency and adrenaline. Emerging into another room, our surroundings shifted once again, plunging us into an unfamiliar environment fraught with uncertainty. With cautious steps, we scanned our surroundings, the dim light casting elongated shadows that danced ominously across the walls. A wave of horror washed over us as we cast our gaze downward, revealing the grim truth that lay hidden in the shadows of the room. Strewn across the floor lay a macabre tableau of lifeless bodies, their pallid forms contorted in grotesque repose, 
their vacant stares bearing silent witness to the unspeakable horrors that had befallen them. The air grew thick with the stench of decay, mingling with the palpable sense of dread that hung heavy in the oppressive silence. For a moment, time seemed to stand still as we grappled with the horrifying realization of the fate that had befallen those unfortunate souls. Each lifeless form served as a grim testament to the malevolent forces that lurked within the depths of this nightmarish labyrinth, their silent screams echoing in the recesses of our minds. With trembling hands and hearts heavy with sorrow, we knew that we were now truly ensnared in a nightmare from which there could be no easy escape. In a frenzied panic, we sprinted back the way we had come, desperate to escape the grisly scene that lay behind us. But our relief was short-lived as we found ourselves inexplicably back in the cramped hallway, the walls closing in around us like the jaws of some monstrous beast. Frantically, I lunged towards what I believed to be the front door, only to stumble and fall headlong down a flight of stairs that materialized before me with disorienting suddenness. Pain seared through my body as I collided with the unforgiving ground, the impact stealing the breath from my lungs and leaving me sprawled amidst the suffocating darkness of the stairwell. With each labored breath, I struggled to make sense of the nightmarish reality that surrounded me, the chilling laughter echoing in my ears as I braced myself for the horrors that awaited me in the depths below. Heart pounding in my chest, I scrambled to my feet, my senses on high alert as I surveyed the treacherous stairwell before me. The ominous sound of splintering wood reverberated through the air, signaling the impending collapse of the floorboards above. With quick reflexes, I leaped aside, narrowly avoiding the deadly cascade as the aged timbers crashed to the ground below. As I pulled myself up the crumbling staircase, my gaze darted frantically in search of my partner, but they were nowhere to be found. Panic clawed at my chest as I grappled with the chilling realization that I was now truly alone in this nightmare realm, severed from the safety and companionship of my fellow officer. The hallway-like portals to safety were now conspicuously absent, leaving behind only barren walls that stretched endlessly into the oppressive darkness. Panic surged within me as I grappled with the unsettling realization that all avenues of escape had been cruelly stripped away, leaving me trapped within this nightmarish labyrinth with no means of retreat. Frantically, I cast about in search of any sign of a way out, my heart hammering in my chest as I struggled to quell the rising tide of fear that threatened to overwhelm me. But no matter where I turned, the walls remained unyielding, their silent mockery serving as a chilling reminder of the dire straits in which I now found myself. As the walls of the hallway began to converge with an eerie, inexorable movement, I felt a rising sense of panic gripping my chest. With no other recourse, I stumbled forward, propelled by the encroaching claustrophobia and the urgent need to escape the tightening confines of the corridor. In a stroke of surreal synchronicity, a new door materialized before me, its presence offering a sliver of hope amidst the encroaching darkness. Without hesitation, I flung it open and stepped through, my heart pounding in my ears as I found myself thrust into yet another hallway, its length stretching out before me like a yawning chasm of uncertainty. Rows of doors lined the walls, their surfaces bearing silent testament to the countless mysteries that lay hidden beyond their thresholds. With each passing moment, the oppressive weight of the unknown pressed down upon me, filling me with a profound sense of trepidation as I grappled with the daunting task of choosing a path forward amidst the dizzying array of possibilities. In the oppressive darkness of the corridor, I reached out blindly, 
grasping for any semblance of salvation amidst the suffocating void. With trembling hands, I flung open the nearest door, only to be met with an impenetrable wall of darkness that seemed to stretch out into infinity, swallowing me whole in its Stygian embrace. Frustration and despair threatened to consume me as I recoiled from the abyss before me, the weight of hopelessness bearing down upon me with crushing force. But even amidst the encroaching darkness, a flicker of determination burned within me, driving me forward even as the odds seemed stacked impossibly against me. Summoning the last vestiges of my strength, I forced myself to my feet and staggered forward, guided by an instinctual sense of urgency that pulsed within me like a beacon in the night. With faltering steps, I stumbled towards another door, my heart hammering in my chest as I prayed for deliverance from the torment that surrounded me. As the door swung open, a blinding light flooded the corridor, bathing me in its brilliant radiance and washing away the shadows that had ensnared me for so long. For a fleeting moment, I was bathed in the warmth of its embrace, the promise of escape tantalizingly close at hand. But as quickly as it had appeared, the light vanished, leaving me once more alone in the suffocating darkness. With a weary sigh, I closed the door and collapsed to the ground, the weight of exhaustion and despair pressing down upon me like a leaden blanket. Terror surged through me as I screamed for help, my voice echoing plaintively through the desolate corridors of the labyrinth. But instead of the reassuring sound of approaching footsteps, all I heard was the chilling silence that hung heavy in the air, mocking my futile cries for salvation. Then, as if in response to my desperate plea, the unmistakable creak of a door opening shattered the oppressive stillness, sending a jolt of fear coursing through my veins. For a brief, tantalizing moment, hope flared within me as I dared to believe that rescue was at hand. But as quickly as it had come, the fleeting promise of salvation was snatched away, replaced by the hollow sound of the door closing once more, sealing me off from whatever lay beyond. With a sinking heart, I realized that the specter of death still lurked in the shadows, its grasp tightening with each passing moment as I languished in this nightmarish purgatory. As the realization of my dire predicament settled like a leaden weight upon my shoulders, a profound sense of hopelessness engulfed me, threatening to drown me in its suffocating embrace. Trapped within the labyrinthine depths of this nightmarish realm, with no means of escape and no hope of rescue, I felt as though I had been condemned to an eternity of torment from which there could be no reprieve. Despair gnawed at the edges of my sanity as I grappled with the futility of my situation, each passing moment stretching out into an endless expanse of darkness and despair. The walls of the corridor seemed to close in around me, their oppressive weight pressing down upon me with suffocating force, while the silence that enveloped me like a shroud echoed with the hollow mockery of my futile struggles. The sound of my frantic screams echoed through the desolate corridors, reverberating off the walls in a cacophony of desperation and despair. Each guttural cry tore from the depths of my soul, a primal expression of the terror and anguish that threatened to consume me whole. With every ounce of strength I possessed, I poured my anguish into those piercing screams, hoping against hope that somewhere, someone would hear my desperate cries and come to my aid. But the oppressive silence that greeted me served only to deepen the sense of isolation and despair that gripped me in its icy embrace. Yet still I screamed. And then. The chilling words pierced the oppressive silence like a knife, sending a shiver down my spine as I recoiled from their haunting echo. It's in the walls, the disembodied voice whispered, 
its spectral presence hovering at the edge of my consciousness like a dark specter. For a moment, I struggled to comprehend the meaning behind those ominous words, my mind reeling with the implications of their sinister implications. Had I truly been ensnared within the twisted confines of this nightmarish labyrinth for so long that I had lost all sense of reality? Or was this merely the ravings of a fractured mind, driven to the brink of madness by the relentless torment of this surreal nightmare? With a sinking heart, I realized that the answers to these questions lay buried deep within the recesses of my fractured psyche, obscured by the shadowy veil of uncertainty that shrouded my memories like a cloak of darkness. But even as doubt gnawed at the edges of my sanity, a flicker of realization sparked within me, illuminating the terrifying truth that had lurked just beyond the edge of my consciousness all along. In that moment of clarity, I knew with a bone-chilling certainty that I had always been here, trapped within the suffocating embrace of this nightmarish labyrinth since time immemorial. And as the walls closed in around me with a final, inexorable embrace, I realized with a sickening dread that there was no escape from the horrors that lurked within the depths of my own fractured mind. As the chilling revelation dawned upon me, a wave of horror swept through my very being. I was the house, an entity bound to its twisted corridors and malevolent secrets for eternity. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper in the walls, every shadow that danced in the darkness all were manifestations of my own tortured existence. I had become the embodiment of the nightmares that haunted those who dared to tread within my cursed halls. The screams of the trapped souls, the shifting passages, the oppressive atmosphere all were reflections of the darkness that now consumed me from within. In that moment of ghastly clarity, I realized that there was no escape from the monstrous fate that had befallen me. I was condemned to wander these haunted halls for all eternity, a prisoner of my own malevolent design. And as the walls closed in around me, sealing me within the suffocating embrace of my own twisted reality, I knew that I would forever be bound to this accursed place, a silent sentinel of horror lurking in the shadows, waiting to ensnare the unwary in its malevolent grasp. In a chilling revelation, I came to understand that I was not merely trapped within the confines of the house I was the house itself. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper in the walls, every shadow that danced in the darkness all were extensions of my own twisted existence. I had become the embodiment of the nightmares that lurked within these cursed halls. The screams of the trapped souls, the shifting passages, the suffocating atmosphere all were manifestations of the darkness that now coursed through my very being. In that moment of horrifying clarity, I realized that I was both prisoner and captor, bound to this accursed place by the malevolent forces that had consumed me. I was condemned to haunt these halls for all eternity, a silent witness to the horrors that unfolded within my own tortured mind. And as the walls closed in around me, sealing me within the suffocating embrace of my own twisted reality, I knew that there would be no escape from the torment that awaited me. I was the house, and the house was me an eternal monument to the darkness that lurked within the deepest recesses of my soul. In that chilling moment of revelation, the boundaries between myself and the house blurred into nothingness. We were not separate entities, but rather facets of the same malevolent entity a twisted fusion of flesh and bone, brick and mortar, bound together by the darkness that consumed us both. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper in the walls, Every shadow that danced in the darkness all were expressions of our shared torment, manifestations of the twisted union that bound us together in eternal suffering.
together, we were the embodiment of all that was dark and unholy, a sinister force that lurked in the shadows, waiting to ensnare the unwary in our malevolent embrace. We were the house, and the house was us a monstrous amalgamation of horror and despair, forever condemned to haunt these cursed halls for all eternity. And as the darkness closed in around us, sealing us within its suffocating embrace, we knew that there would be no escape from the twisted fate that had bound us together. For we were one a grotesque fusion of flesh and stone, condemned to wander these haunted halls until the end of time itself. In that final, chilling realization, I understood with a dreadful certainty that I was indeed home. This accursed house, with its labyrinthine corridors and malevolent secrets, was not merely a place of torment it was my truest and most terrifying sanctuary. Every creak of the floorboards, every whisper in the walls, every shadow that danced in the darkness they were all familiar echoes of my own twisted existence, manifestations of the darkness that lurked within the deepest recesses of my soul. In this house of horrors, I found solace amidst the suffocating embrace of despair. Here, amidst the shifting passages and shifting shadows, I was free to embrace the darkness that consumed me, to revel in the nightmares that haunted my every waking moment. For I was not merely a prisoner within these cursed halls I was their master, their keeper, their most monstrous creation. And as the darkness closed in around me, I embraced it with open arms, for in this house of horrors, I had found my truest and most terrifying home. With a sense of grim determination, I embraced the darkness that surrounded me, allowing it to envelop me in its suffocating embrace. In this twisted realm of nightmares, I was both prisoner and master, bound to the accursed house by the malevolent forces that consumed us both. With each step forward, I felt the weight of my own twisted existence pressing down upon me, driving me ever deeper into the heart of darkness that lurked within these haunted halls. But I did not falter, for I knew that only by confronting the horrors that lay within could I hope to find peace. And so, with every ounce of strength that remained to me, I pressed onward, guided by an unshakable resolve to confront the darkness that lurked within my own tortured soul. For though the road ahead may be fraught with peril and uncertainty, I knew that as long as even the faintest glimmer of hope remained, I would continue to fight against the encroaching tide of despair, clinging to the belief that somewhere amidst the labyrinthine corridors of this nightmarish realm, salvation awaited those brave enough to seek it. And so, with one final, defiant cry, I plunged headlong into the darkness, ready to confront the nightmares that awaited me and bring myself home at last. In that eternal moment, I embraced my fate with a grim determination, ready to confront the darkness that awaited me. For in this house of horrors, amidst the shifting shadows and echoing screams, I knew that I would find my truest and most terrifying home. Forever bound to the accursed house by the malevolent forces that consumed us both, I embraced my role as both prisoner and master, knowing that in the depths of despair lay the only solace I would ever know.